All right, in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can add dust to your objects and make them look super detailed and old looking. So let's get into it. So the first thing you'll need is a model to scatter your dust on. So I've modeled this pen and I've also uploaded this pen to Gumroad completely for free with all the 8K textures applied, just so that you can use it um, if you really want to. From there, we're gonna need a dust texture and also some dust objects to actually scatter. So for the dust texture, I'm actually using one that Blender Guru showed quite a while ago, which is this dust texture here. I'll leave the link below where he explains his dust process, but I'll also leave a link so that you can just go ahead and straight away download this as well. So first thing, let's apply our dust texture. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into each of my materials because there's multiple different materials on this pen, and I'm gonna add in an image texture. And then from there, I'm gonna load in my dust PNG file, which I've got here. And to start off with, I'm gonna add a geometry node and a separate XYZ node. And I'm gonna plug the normal into the vector. And when I preview this, you'll see it creates sort of a black and white mask from top to bottom. And that's gonna simulate how the dust falls on objects. As well as that, I'm gonna use a layer weight node. And I'm gonna plug that into a mixed color so that once I plug the facing in, you'll see I'll get a little bit of a softer gradient and the effect becomes stronger when you're looking at it, which is sort of how dust works. From there, I'm going to plug in my dust texture. So I'm gonna use a diffuse BSDF and I'm gonna plug the color into the color and probably bring the roughness all the way up. As well as that, I'm gonna plug in a mixed color into my dust and I'm gonna set the top one to multiply and I'm gonna preview this node. So right now it's super white, super bright, and I just want it to be quite subtle. So I'm gonna bring this black quite down and I'm gonna maybe add a, a little bit of sort of brownie tint to it, and that looks good. And I actually need to scale this texture a little bit, so I'm gonna press Control T, and I'm gonna scale this about seven times, just so it's, it looks a little bit more dust-like and that looks pretty good. So from there, I'm gonna create a mix shader, like so, plug my dust into the bottom, my main material into the top, and then this mask into the factor. And now if I preview it without, and then with, you'll see how we get a little bit of dust pooling just on the top of my object. And that may be a little bit too brown, so maybe let's just desaturate that a little bit more. And then if I did want more of an effect, I could always just brighten it like so. But I think what I had looked pretty good and maybe just desaturate that a little bit more. That looks pretty good. So now what I need to do is I just need to copy this onto all of my other materials. So I'm gonna press Control C and Control V and then just plug that into that object and then make the mix shader the main. And if it's looking a little bit too big, we can just scale it down on that one as well. And then go into this object and do the exact same. And this looks like it could be a little bit bigger. Okay, so this is probably one where I'm gonna need to increase the brightness on this one. And then I'll also bring down the size. That looks pretty good. So without it, and with it, it just makes it a little bit softer and that pretty much works. I mean, you could go ahead and add it onto these other objects, but because I'm not using these other parts, I'm not gonna bother. So now we need to get some dust objects that we can make and then scatter on our object. But first we need to understand what actually is dust. Now dust is primarily made up of like organic materials. So skin, hair, pollen, dust mites, like little insects all that type of stuff, and also some inorganic ones as well. Now, I'm gonna mainly focus on sort of the skin and hair, but if you do wanna go ahead and model some dust mites to scatter on your object, be my guest. But for this, I'm just gonna keep it simple and go with skin and hair. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom out a little bit and let's just turn off all of my lights. So I'm just gonna turn off that for now. And I'm gonna add in a mesh and I'm gonna to go to Icosphere and I'm just gonna make sure that my subdivisions are one. And the main reason for that is just to keep everything nice and low poly. So what I'm gonna do is just 
make some random objects which i think sort of skin and hair would look like so if i maybe just grab these two points and scale them out maybe that could be something maybe do the same with these other ones maybe a little bit blockier maybe have something which is a little bit more flat like square like and maybe like the same thing but scale up it's just about having loads of variance and then maybe let's have a big one that's a bit like that as well so maybe we could say that this is the skin so for the hair what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to add in a cylinder and also the more that you create the probably better that everything will look but i'm just going to keep it simple and probably do around 12 or something for this so for my hair grab a cylinder with about six subdivisions and i'll just go in front of you actually for this and i'll just start rotating it and something that i noticed when i was doing mine is that hair is a lot thinner than you think so if you select all the loops and go to individual scaling individual origin sorry you can then scale this in and you can get nice thin hair so now if i come over maybe i can just delete them faces so this loop and then go again or maybe i'll have a straight hair for that one and use that as a base for my others so maybe let's do that maybe come out a little bit and just keep doing this until you have something that you're happy with so now we just need to scatter them so there are ways to scatter just in default blender without any add-ons and that is using the hair particle system now i never use the hair particle system um, so i won't be showing you how to do that i'm gonna instead be using geo scatter which if you haven't used geo scatter before it's basically an add-on which lets you scatter really quickly and easily and intuitively um, and if you haven't got it already there's going to be a link in the description where you can buy it for yourself if you think it's something that you're going to need i pretty much use it for all my shots now like all the forest all the grass that i always do is pretty much all geo scatter but anyway let's get started on scattering on this pen so it actually looks like one of my skin is in my pen at the moment so let's just move that over there and to start off with i'm just gonna select my pen so i'm going to get this eyedropper select the pen and right now i've got all my pen as one object just to make it a little bit easier and i'm going to do let's say three scatters on this so i'm going to scatter all these skin ones first so i've got them all selected i'm going to go to this preset here and i'm just going to scatter in the viewport now my scatter is hidden it says so i've got to unhide that and we can see we still can't see anything so what we need to do is go to our default scale and just scale this down let's scale it down to that so far and then what we'll need to do is also increase the density so there we can see our density is increased and they're still a bit too big so let's just keep going with the scale until the size that we want maybe something like that could work and then maybe just increase that density even more and that looks good for our, sort of our base so what we need to do now is sort of randomize everything so right now they're all pointing from the same normal so what we can do is go to our rotation and press random and now this will basically randomize where everything is pointing which will help we can also introduce random rotation so we can say how much stuff can rotate by and that will just add a little bit more believability and you won't see as much repeating and then we also have tilting from there we can also introduce random scale which it already has and we can do random mirror as well just to break up that sort of constant repetitiveness we also need to set up on materials so why don't we do that quickly so for a material what i did was actually quite simple i literally just grabbed a hair bsdf and plug that in and i changed it to transmission and i just kept it at around sort of this setting i do think they are still too big so let's just drop that down ever so slightly and that looks good this is sort of like the subtle part of this the scatter the hairs are going to be what really sells it so maybe let's come over here and grab these four and then let's do the same thing again so scatter objects change the scale increase that density so that's definitely way too many i just introduced like 100 million there 
don't need that many just yet so maybe that's good and then again rotation random random rotation and then get the random mirror as well and now the final one which are sort of like our bigger hairs and then let's just scale that down increase that instance again and we can see what's happening a bit more and we can see the scale is definitely way too big that's looking pretty good uh, again set the random random rotation and then random mirror and let's see how that's looking that's looking pretty cool now I do think this dust is a little bit too strong and too rough so maybe we could just bring some roughness back maybe even bring some light back that looks pretty good and I think once this has depth of field on this will look even cooler so let's go to our camera and turn on depth of field and I think that looks pretty good especially with depth of field to see dust you're going to have some depth of field um, because you're previewing, previewing something so small um, if I do turn off depth of field we can see what it looks like so extremely dusty um, and you can see it's catching all them highlights at the back from the backlight which is pretty cool but yeah this is just a way to add dust into your scene and this material may need some tweaking um, we could even add subdivisions to all of our uh, dust so maybe I come here and I just give it one subdivision this may crash now but we'll see so now like everything's nice and smooth but yeah that is how to turn your object dusty I guess so again there's going to be links in the description for this pen file the dust image texture and also geoscatter if you want to pick that up Please do leave a like if you did enjoy the video and subscribe if you want to see more and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.